Good evening, Excellency, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome once again to Cambodia Global Dialogue or Service Asia TV. Um, tonight, I have the pleasure to have a, a, a young, you know, uh, Cambodian professional who specialize in uh, rural economy, and I thought that the best uh, topic to talk today is about uh, innovative rural development. Perhaps a, a good perspective from Cambodia. As you know, Cambodia is primarily an agriculture country. Let's face it. You know, we talk a lot about, you know, export government to Europe, to the U.S. Uh, we talk a lot about tourism. You know, tourists are coming to Cambodia. I think last year we exceeded more than five million people. But you know, if you drive around Cambodia, if you leave Phnom Penh, you leave Siem Reap, what you see is an ag agrarian society. And this is something that we, 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 we tend to sort of like uh, neglect our, our, our potential. So I thought uh, it would be good to have a, a good chat, a, a good dialogue today. So uh, Bisat, uh, welcome to the show and thank you for coming. Uh, but before we start, I, I'd like to give you a few minutes for you to introduce yourself to, to the audience a bit. Yeah, thank you, Excellencies and uh, lady, Excellency, ladies and gentlemen. It's my great honor to be here today with you to talk uh, uh, to share some of my perspective uh, on the uh, rural economy of Cambodia and my name is Kai Pisset, I am the director of uh, Center for Sustainable Development Studies, the Asian uh, Vision Institute. Uh, before going to the substance on rural economy, I would like to uh, briefly introduce my background a little bit. Um, I was born in Cambodia, but uh, in Phnom Penh, and Phnom Penh that time was not like Phnom Penh today. Yeah, in the, during the 80, uh, 1980, it was like rural Cambodia. So we barely have uh, basic services, even hospital, road access, uh, good uh, water quality, and, and so on. And I went for my bachelor degree uh, in the Royal University of Agriculture. And then I went for my overseas studies, uh, working on uh, environmental management and development. And up. Uh, during the study, I also work in rural areas in mm. Kok Kong province, in different part of the, uh, of the uh, in various provinces in Cambodia, and working more on environmental management and rural livelihood. Mm. And what, what, what university you went uh, overseas? Uh, for my master degree, I went to uh, Australian National University, okay, ANU, yeah, right. ANU yeah. on environmental management mm. and development. Mm -hmm. And for my PhD, I uh, went to. I was on a joint doctoral program with National University of Singapore and mm. Harvard, mm. Uh, yeah, Harvard Jenching Institute. Mm. So I spent like three year and a half in uh, uh, in NUS and yes. one year and a half in Harvard. Mm. So my topic was on the environmental management and development mm. as well, looking mm. at the policy that can shape and drive Cambodia forward mm. and try to find balance between mm. environmental conservation and uh, development. When when you come back from uh, to Cambodia. Uh, in uh, 2017, late 2017, but mm. I officially uh, graduated, uh, my, uh, got my degree in 2018. Okay, all right, all right. That's great. So exciting uh, to finish uh, your schooling, I guess. <laughs> it's always the exciting part to finish your thesis. And I guess coming home, you know, to try to apply this new knowledge, I think it must be something that uh, you are proud. But anyway, uh, Tell me a bit about Cambodia uh, rural economy. What 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 transpires, you know, uh, since uh, the peace process? Yeah, let let's just uh, start uh, the dateline from uh, the moment we have the peace process, right? Because we all know that before that, it's really, uh, I would say, nearly ground zero. I, I wouldn't say totally ground zero, but it's somewhere there. So yeah, yeah. so so let let's start after the peace process. What have you seen the the evolution of Cambodia in the context of uh, agriculture development. Yeah, starting from the peace process in early 1990, Cambodia economy have really increased. Uh, the GDP have grown in average 7.5% from mm. uh, 1995 to 2018, and the shape of the economy also changed from first from the agrarian uh, economy to more uh, service and, and uh, manufacturing. But even though with that economic growth, Cambodia still relies on agriculture. We see an agrarian economy. Mm. And we look at the sector itself, the GDP from the, uh, from the agriculture is around like 30%. Mm. 
but then if you look at the labor force in agriculture it's still uh, largely a lot of employment in agriculture mm -hmm. fishery and forestry mm -hmm. and the uh, role of the economy is still uh, of the agriculture is still large because of the, a lot of people living in rural areas 70 percent according to mm -hmm. the world bank uh, um, data is 70 percent of the people mm -hmm. living in rural areas and 90 percent of the poor are living in rural areas mm. so mm. the economy uh, agriculture mm. remains very important for Cambodia mm. and we really have to explore more on rural Cambodia what can we do mm. uh, what can we use uh, for the best of the potential mm. that we have in rural areas in order for Cambodia to move forward to mm. achieve the vision 2030 yes. to become the middle mm. uh, upper income in 2050. I, I, I would yeah. say uh, from the early 90s, uh, we, we, we have moved quite a bit. Uh, we now have a, I, I think we, we had a rice policy for quite a while already, uh, nearly 10 years. Uh, so I think at least the rice sector is doing well, right? I mean, yeah. uh, but other, what are other agricultural subsector that you think have potential? Yeah. Yeah, uh, I totally agree that, that the rice uh, sector has done it really well. But we haven't really looked at uh, other products that yes. can also have potential. You can see the re uh, recent uh, mm. uh, news that the banana yes. is, uh, export to China and we are trying to explore different uh, what we call agricultural commodity that mm -hmm. can be exported as well. Cassava is... Uh, uh, cassava is also one of the commodities and mm. maybe the uh, papers, paper have also been exporting to other countries but not really much in large mm. uh, amounts of agricultural mm. product itself. So yeah. we really have to explore different agro agricultural how, how, how about agro uh, industry crop like uh, rubber, for example? Yeah, rubber has been doing well mm. uh, last uh, decades, and but there are fluctuations as mm. well. So we need to really yes. yeah uh, explore that uh, potential for rubbers mm. and mm. Uh, cashew nut also. Ah uh, yes, yes. Yeah. So there are uh, to me it uh, we need to explore more and mm. try to. Uh, connect the different market to the world mm. and because there are challenges that Cambodia have uh, still face in terms of mm. the uh, exporting the agricultural product to you, you, you know you uh, said you you mentioned one word which is very dear to me because I'm, I'm more a trade person uh, by background right so to me anything have to be linked to the market right mm. but to be linked to the market you need access you need road you need infrastructure you need uh, uh, I would say this connectivity, if I can use a very, the buzzword of the century now is connectivity. Everything's about connectivity. But, but let's face it, you know, uh, after the, uh, the, the peace process start, right, mm -hmm. how difficult it is for us to go to the province. I mean, to go to Mundulkari, it will take you God knows how many days. But now you can leave in the morning and have lunch over there. Yeah. And along the way, along the road, the paved road, right? Yeah. Along this highway, you see bustling uh, rural economy, yeah. micro enterprise pushing up, right? Yeah. What is your perspective in terms of this uh, uh, access to the market, right? Yeah. You know, with, with all the road highway that we have now, even rural area like in Perry here, you know, yeah. uh, what, what, what do you see the, the impact in terms of that uh, connectivity aspect? Yeah, in terms of the connect, uh, connectivity aspect, it, uh, Cambodia have really moved so fast. Mm -hmm. The government have put a lot of effort on infrastructure development. Mm -hmm. We could easily see the difference from just five years different, not, mm -hmm. not need, let's just say about 10 or 15 yes. years, yeah. that the road to Mandalkiri to Priyavihid and other rural areas really connect, well connected. Mm -hmm. And it's much easier uh, for the uh, uh, commodity to connect to the market. Mm -hmm. But uh, what I have seen is the, pr the problem right now, the mm -hmm. Uh, uh, there are some uh, areas the the agriculture itself seem to be fragmented mm. ah, and okay. collections of this uh, uh, areas of the uh, agricultural product come to the market sometimes yes. they have to go to local markets and mm. then the uh, the towns and then go to okay. all the way to so in too the many fragmentation right yeah, yeah. so in other words the, the supply chain is not smooth yet yeah, it's not smooth yet and yeah there remain a problem with the, uh, between the demand and supply sometimes mm. the people the rural people they could not even supply the 
uh, amount that already been agreed. Mm. So there uh, are really challenges between the mm. two that need uh, more facilitations. Okay, okay. Yeah. So, 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 so basically, there's a clear role of uh, public sector stepping in, yeah. in terms of helping on yeah. the larger micro issue. You know, uh, policy coordination, perhaps. You know. Yeah. 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 yeah, there there's very important uh, role for public sectors to mm. play, like for example, in Ministry of Agriculture, mm. there's a light role for agriculture extensions yes. to have a coordinator to provide training to rural people to yes. uh, yeah. plant organic uh, crops and, mm. and, and so on. Yeah. And there's a, a, a light role for public mm. sectors mm. and there are also the role of the private sector as well. So mm. what uh, the project we've been doing, we mm. can come okay. to that later. Okay. We try to Yes. bring it public uh, public private mm. uh, partnership to yes. help uh, make sure that this uh, the demand and supply mm. really uh, well coordinated yeah i i, I think uh, you 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 mentioned this uh, notion of uh, coordinating uh, and ensuring a much smoother uh, less fragmented approach it, it's it, it's probably the the main issue now because sometimes you if if you take simrip is a good example, right? Mm. Uh, the demand is there. You have how many hotels now? There are maybe a couple hundred hotels, yeah. two star, three star, five star. They there, and in a high end hotel, they want to have access uh, to have better organic. Uh, yeah. I would say vegetable that sort of thing, and one would wonder why, you know, a Cambodia with such a fertile soil next to the Tunli Saab, yeah. where everything grow. You just put it and it grow. Why we're not able to, you know, provide such a steady supply? I mean, quality supply, yeah, and not, quality. not just... Uh, and, and the fact that you mentioned that uh, the issue, perhaps sometimes, is not the supply, but is a quality supply. Yeah. So I think when we, when we come back uh, from a break, I want to uh, dwell straight into what uh, the model uh, of innovative rural development that uh, you've been working on that uh, you think have tremendous potential, not just for Cambodia, but also uh, as a lesson learned for other countries in the region as well. All right? Yeah. yeah okay, so we'll, we'll take a short break. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Pisset, let's, let's dwell on uh, something that you've been working on, which I, I think you are quite proud of. Uh, you know, it's, it's what the 100 uh, model village. Model village yeah. Tell me about it. Why 100? Why model? Why village? Yeah, uh, 100 model village is a new innovative approach. It's actually being adopted by the uh, leaders, in the Prime Minister and leader of the Royal Government of Cambodia. Hmm. Uh, on the 14th January 2019. Oh, as recent yeah, as, as recent. early this year. Yeah, yeah. Uh, as part of the A uh, Cambodian demonstration projects mm. uh, uh, to show to the Asian Cultural Council, which yes. is uh, in, in which Cambodia is uh, assigned to have yes. the uh, uh, Asian Co uh, Cultural Council mm. Secretariat in Cambodia. Yeah. So the Royal Government of Cambodia choose this project, adopt mm. this project as a new development mode, innovative hmm. development models okay. for uh, rural development. We try to make best use of the potential in rural areas hmm. in order to achieve our long-term goal of 2030 and 2050 hmm. and at hmm. the same time try to contribute to the 17 uh, United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Yes, yes. And that brought, uh, Quite ambitious, I must say. Yeah, it's quite ambitious, and it really a uh, goal mm. uh, in through the uh, rock cutting issues mm. and also multidiscipline as well. Mm. And the uh, conceptual guidance of that approach we call Techo. Yeah, yeah. Techo, letter T for technology mm -hmm. and thought, mm -hmm. uh, E, yeah. letter E for education and mm. ecology, mm. and C for culture and community, mm -hmm. H for humanity, um, yeah, and Oh. Yes, humanities. Yeah. And the all for uh, organics and ori uh, origins. Oh, right. So with that guiding principle, it really broad mm. theme that we are trying to achieve. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, with that hundred model village, we uh, go under the uh, slogan of ditching the diamond from the ground, mm, which means okay. try to best uh, make best yeah. use of the resources yes, and that yes. uh, what we call the natural capitals yes. and human capital mm. and also social and cultural capital that are available 
in the uh, in the areas in the village mm. Mm. and so we choose four village mm. in each uh, four villages in each province okay and we multiply by uh, 25 it's a hundred model village so it's, it's nationwide it's, it's nationwide, nationwide projects mm -hmm. and the role of the AVI is to uh, play advisory role to mm. the royal government of Cambodia okay with the, uh, in which the civil society alliance forums is tasked okay. to play the coordination oh, of all right, the projects. All right. So basically, uh, it, it's really a, a very uh, broad, multi-stakeholder approach. You have civil society involved, that sort of thing, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah okay, okay. Yeah, it really broad, engage with all the stakeholders, yes, yes, with yeah. the government, with mm. the private sector, NGO, okay. local uh, community. Okay. And the unique is in this project is that it is driven and led by the local by local people okay they so that they have the sense of responsibilities and uh, ownership of the yes, project okay, without okay. Uh, even after the intervention by the government mm. uh, the project will continue and okay. the community will be able to lead that's what sustainability is all about i would say right yes. because you cannot rely too long on the government because mm. the resource is uh, i would say is diminished over time mm. but how do you i would say Select, say for example, in a province. How do you? What are the criteria of selecting village? The four village. Uh, the four village. Uh, we have to go through different process mm. for this uh, project implementation. We start with uh, project selection, as yes. your questions, and then we go for a more comprehensive study, and then we okay. go for uh. the project piloting. Okay. Yeah. So with the project selection, there's a team uh, mm. coming from different group from AVIs and the mm. civil society alike and we go to the province, yes. any province, yeah. uh, in okay. Pravhi or others. But right now we already started with 16 villages in Pravhi province okay. and uh, last week we went to Takao province. Yes. So we have rolled out to other mm. provinces as okay. well. So we went to, uh, we went through the 16 provinces, mm. uh, sorry, 16 villages. Yes. Look at uh, their potential, yes. look at their culture, mm. look at their okay. uh, access to the road, okay. look at their uh, role of gender, mm. yeah, and uh, look at the uh, resource availability mm. and so on. But we have to, uh, our project is uh, more cultural based. Yes, yes. Trying to okay, okay. Yeah, provide okay. income uh, generations for the people and mm. at the same time uh, make sure the people live happy close yes, to their yes. homes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so with different criteria of road access, uh, mm. uh, uh, leadership in there, the commitment of the rural community, yes, cultural yes. role of yes. the yeah. women and so on, we have a list of like 10, 20, uh, 20 more than mm. 20 of criteria. Don't forget the youth. Yeah, because I I think uh, for me probably uh, one of the concern that we should be very careful is that how to ensure that uh, social harmony because social harmony has a lot to do with family. Yeah. You know, when the kids have to migrate uh, from rural area to work in a garment factory, I I have no problem with that. But what I'm saying is that if there are jobs closer to home, closer to their family. Uh, they could help the family, and and I think Cambodian being a very, I would say, uh, family-driven, you know, a society, mm -hmm. uh, having the comfort of having your kids, your parents around, matter quite a bit. Yeah. Uh, so so I think uh, culture it's is important because we care a lot for a parent, a grandparent, and they care a lot for their grandchildren. But you can only care so much when they are so far away. Yeah. And and I think yes, to have remittance from a government worker, mm -hmm. a shoes factory worker, in Phnom Penh, at the end of the month they send some money home is one thing. But it does not substitute mm -hmm. for this this uh, this personal care to be around, you know. Mm -hmm. So I think this this uh, whole uh, village uh, model uh, I, I I hope you stress a lot from on on that social harmony. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, we, yeah we really pay close attention to that social harmonies, and um, we hope that with our interventions, the village is going to be attractive and charming to yes. the people to yes. stay on, yes. which is very important for yeah. long-term community developments. Yes. Staying too close to home, it mm. have a sense of communities. Yes, and. And actually, in rural areas, you would say like a lot of people now migrate to urban or to Thailand to other yes. uh, for job, right? But at the same time, the cost of production, for example, you hire one or uh, uh, a farmer to do yes. agriculture land, it, the cost is already increased, like yes. c close to um, 
a ten dollar per day mm. be compared to the salary in the city mm. it's not much uh, far different mm. and at the same time through our project we hope to be uh, can provide intervention mm. using the uh, existing potential mm. whether it's tourism fisheries yes. agricultural lands yes. or handicraft yes. any available in the community mm. we try to bring up and provide employment to the people yeah. with that the people can have mm. better mm. access to yes. education, to healthcare, yes. to the family uh, bounds, and yes. so on, which is very important. Within, you, yeah, uh, yeah. I, 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 I travel quite a bit, you know, uh, in, in, in my line of work, and uh, it's interesting that uh, when I talk about Cambodia to to foreigner, uh, the first thing that comes to mind is always Uncle Wat, right? Mm. And those who are more historical driven, they will mention about the genocide, that sort of thing. Mm. But uh, you don't hear much about them talking about Cambodia. I go to visit the eco tourists. I want to see, you know, the the, the current culture, you know. Uh, and uh, there are there are country. In fact, when they promote the the country, they say, "Look, go to live uh, for a week in that particular place." You know, it it's it's nothing fancy, but that's how our people live. Yeah. You know, so it's quite interesting. Uh, in, in Cambodia, I'm pretty sure there are activity, there are uh, uh, village who have this uh, homestay, I, I guess. Yeah, yeah, there yeah, yeah. are villages that yeah. have homestay. The, this is quite interesting, you know, uh, because sometimes when tourists come after Angkor Wat, they would want to feel, you know, uh, what is it to to live a Cambodian lifestyle, you know, uh, yeah. uh, wake up in the morning, go to the river, you know, take a plunge, you know. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, Cambodia have like, we say Cambodia in general, actually. Yeah. But if you go into a different village, yes. they would have their unique culture. Yes. For example, the recent village we went to in Takayo province, mm. they live on the floating, yes. Yeah, yes. Uh, on uh, the lake. So they yeah. have a, their own uh, unique culture of yes. cooking, of mm. uh, uh, mean of transportation, just go by boat, yes. or they would have their own mm. uh, resort, for example, just their local community resort with mm. the gazebo on the rice field, mm. and look in the sunset, or yes, yes. see the greenery itself. It really yeah. Interesting. While you go to Koke uh, or in Prabhu here, there are still culture of like a uh, local uh, sport or game they're using the sword, mm. uh, hitting each other with their uh, herbal on the skin. That so uh, it show really different unique culture. Yes. Even the food itself, mm. they have the spite. Mm. We our Cambodia we have prohok, pro yeah, like yes. the, the famous yeah, one. Yeah. But in that village, they have prohok, but with something with. Uh, Recipe by ah, itself. With their own. Right? With their own because they have yeah. to go to, sometimes in the party, go to the forest for yes. one. Yes. So they ah. have that one. They can okay. use it for one and yes, just yes. can uh, yes. have yeah. uh, with lunch or with their meal directly without any have to cooking, have to do cooking mm. or anything. Yeah. So Cambodia have really have a lot of potential mm. in uh, eco tourism in the village. Mm. And as a Buddhist country, yes. yeah, we uh, put uh, in our constitution, Cambodia is a Buddhist country. Yes, yes. So we may uh, have, like in Prayer here, we may have a, not the plan, may have mm. the Buddhist uh, village. Ah, we are okay. the ma uh, they are the Buddhist history, we are the Buddhist statues and so on. Beautiful. Could be celebrated Beautiful. and we are the uh, tourists can come and see yes. how Buddhist... Yes. Uh, well, I mean, you, 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 you mentioned this is great. I'm so happy to hear that because sometimes you know, being a Buddhist country, you we go to the temple, we go to pagoda, right? Mm. But uh, it, it's really you making the effort to go there. Uh, you sometimes I take my family to uh, Luang Prabang, oh, right? Yeah. And Luang Prabang, uh, it's it's a culture that you wake up at four in the morning, you know, get and you line up, yeah. you know. So tourists, the local. They get up there, they line up in front of uh, the pagoda, and there's about a hundred monks. So by the time sunrise yeah. come, you know, you have already pay respect and pay homage to about a hundred monks who just walk by there. Yeah, so so it, it become it become a tourist attraction. Yeah. Because when we go to a delegation, a meeting or something, they always say, you should go to the monk, the arm offering to the monk. Yeah, but this, this is quite uh, something, and maybe the village that you mentioned, the Buddhist uh, village you mentioned, could be the same thing, you know. Yeah. So it's not like we're copying other country. We have our own culture, but it's more about organizing. Yes, yes, that's yeah. true. Yeah, we have a lot of things that in place that we haven't really organized yes, well. Yes, yes. Yeah. yeah, in terms of culture, in terms of uh, 
like homestay as you mentioned or eco village like in the floating life in Tun Bay Sap, for example, yes. there are a lot of uh, way they live on the floating life. Yes. And they have their own way, but we mm. haven't really explored much. Yes. Or in Prabhuhi itself or Mundulkiri or Nagri, we have indigenous group of people. Mm, we yes. haven't really explored, yes. learn about them, about their food culture, learn about their practices mm. and their artifacts and so on. So we need to do a lot more on that yes. part to mm. promote the tourism. Yes, yes. Yeah. All oh, right. Well, so. Now you start with a pilot, you know, and uh, what is the timeline that you see this model, uh, uh, you know, will reach its maximum potential, which is the 100 village? Yeah, the project itself, it's a five-year project. Okay. It's a pilot project. If it proves to be successful, mm. it can extend uh, to another uh, uh, five years uh, okay. or ten years because okay. it's really a new model. Yes. And we already started first year, we start doing this uh, Pilot uh, the village selections. Yeah. After then, after that, we will have mm. a comprehensive yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. study mm. that will collect all the information available. Yes, yeah. Yeah. And then uh, uh, the, after that, we go for piloting, really introducing uh, projects. Okay. okay. And the project itself will link to the uh, will allow community to uh, lead the mm. process. Yes. And we also provide necessary capacity building to these people. Mm. Okay. And and we uh, value their knowledge. Yes, yeah. Uh, their local ecological, environmental knowledge, mm. social knowledge, culture, mm. everything. And at the same time, we would provide necessary uh, capacity building yes, yeah. program. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, lesson learned is important. Uh, you, you mentioned that word. Uh, it's good that some pilot uh, village uh, succeed. Uh, different geography go. Uh, I say distribution. Yeah. Uh, uh, is the ministry of tourism involved? Right, for sure. Right. Yeah. Uh, who else? A mention of uh, uh, when culture. the process uh, go into more, yes. uh, uh, there will be a lot of role from Ministry of Tourism, mm-hmm. Ministry of Rural Development, yes. Ministry of Agriculture, yeah. Ministry of Meteorology. Yeah. Ah, okay. yeah. Yes. And, and it may involve, we also will involve the handicraft industry as well. Yes. Because yes. there are handicraft that yes. uh, people have been producing that haven't really explored and yes. export to the market. Yes, yes. And yeah, recently we managed to. Uh, uh, based on the uh, previous uh, 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 what we call links, yes. we managed to bring one Japanese uh, company okay. to Prabhu here. Yes. They plan to produce fingerling, the small fish, uh-huh. and supply to the village. Is that and right? Yeah, so yes. with that. Very expensive, you know that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah very expensive fingerling there. Yeah. Very expensive. Yeah, so yeah, that we hope that with that kind of uh, uh, partnership, mm. uh, private partnership, with yes. uh, will provide job of GT for yes. the people. Yeah. yeah. At the same time, the people can benefit. Mm. First, they can grow that kind of fish yes. uh, for their own uh, pro- uh, additional protein. And at yes. the same time, at the end of the year, they mm. can also sell and mm. make some uh, money yes. from that as well. So you, you, you touched uh, a bit on uh, capacity building. You know, uh, I, I think you know when you first start mentioning that uh, the idea of the project is to pick the stone from the earth. Yeah. And then we refine it. It's like diamond, right? Yeah, you know, uh, you need to refine it. Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, precious stone yeah. in itself is not that precious. Yeah. It's only after it's refined. Yeah. Uh, so if I can use that metaphor, a good example that we as Cambodian are very proud. Whenever we travel abroad, I always stop by to Artisan Donko. Yeah. Right, because yeah. I know when I I buy a, a product, a souvenir, a gift for my friend that I will visit in Canada, Australia, or in Singapore, in France, mm-hmm. I know that small gift because you cannot buy a big one because of luck it right. Yeah. But it's quality. It's mm-hmm. quality, and it it's such a a nice feeling when you visit them a couple of years later, mm-hmm. you still see that piece on their wall, mm-hmm. on their mm-hmm. shelf, you know. But you see, it's a quality, right? Yeah. And this quality is from a Cambodian craftsman. Yes. And, you know, from Angkor, you can see that Cambodia are great craftsmen, yeah. are great artisan. Right? Yeah. And these are something that I would say, uh, how can we, uh, I would say, help them to harness their existing artistic skill, right? Mm-hmm. Not just for the people in Siem Reap, because when you drive to Siem Reap, you 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 pass by I think one place where they do all the statue of Buddha for example. Yeah. yeah. It, it it it's a village in you know industry in itself, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, uh, you go to Kamong Chang, people make Chang, right? Clay, yeah. The the clay thing, that sort of thing, you know. Yeah. 
So I think we will we'll take another, uh, the last break, and when we come back, we, we, we dig a bit more on the organizational aspect of it, and how we would see, you know, Cambodia model being shared to the rest of other uh, country uh, for the purpose of, uh, you know, showing off that culture matter. Mm -hmm. If you harness culture well, you can bring development, you can bring social harmony. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. So, another break. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, the 100 Model Village is a Cambodian initiative, we should be proud of it. Uh, it's part of a larger, uh, I would say, scheme in the fact that uh, Cambodia is the host of the uh, Asian Cultural Council, you know, uh, and we have our own uh, Secretary General who are permanently based here. Excellency uh, Suyara. Uh, it's a great initiative, so we promote quite a bit the initiative. Uh, so people are watching, people are watching, people want to see how Cambodia is doing. Uh, what do you see uh, from your perspective? Uh, how soon can we share? And where do we share this? You know, in the context of, uh, you know, with the neighbor, but also in the context, don't forget, you mentioned yourself, the Sustainable Development Goal. You know, Cambodia is committed to deliver mm -hmm. on this goal, right? But uh, this could be one of the contribution yeah. that we can help, particularly yeah. in terms of poverty reduction, in terms of uh, a few other goals that uh, mm -hmm. we, we should be mindful of. Yeah, uh, yeah Cambodia, uh, be, yeah, actually Cambodia should be proud that the Asian Cultural Council is uh, hosted in Cambodia among 52 countries and uh, thanks to the teams and the, the royal government Cambodia for f uh, working really hard in order to convince other countries to give this position to Cambodia hmm. and I believe uh, Excellency uh, Suhyara and I believe you're also part of the process as well yes. uh, it's uh, really worked really hard and we but with uh, our pleasure taking this house with our honor we also yes. have to be careful as well yes the other 52 country are watching us yes how we perform how can body perform mm. so the uh, ACS, uh, the 100 model village is the broad initiative that we hope mm. it will be successful yeah. we cannot afford to fail for yes this. yes and uh, we uh, the ACC Secretary will be the main channel hmm. to share the experience okay. uh, with other country and because we have a meeting every uh, one or two per year and yes. we have to share we're going to share and other country would ask as well hmm. but even we have just start even though we have just started the project we hmm. already been approached uh, by the Indonesian government uh -huh. asking us more about to understand more so that they can apply with their hmm. own uh, contact as well yes. it uh, the contact itself doesn't have to be uh, the project itself doesn't have to be copy 100% it's yes. just like we have the models yes. and they can just and adapt customize it, yeah, it. yeah customize, customize it into their yeah. own context yeah and we also have a connection with nepal as well yes okay yeah so we already just have a re recent visit of nepal right yeah. yeah 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 so the uh, the experience from 100 model village will be shared widely mm. to other country we may uh while we are doing this uh, job we will work with other country like Laos, mm. or Thais, or Vietnam, Myanmar. Yes. yes. May, we may end up uh, building the cultural route, right? Mm. From all the way from Cambodia to uh, uh, Laos or Thai, Myanmar, Bangladesh, go to Nepal, and all the way to uh, uh, India and go uh, through this may, route. Right? Maybe, maybe we can retrace back uh, to our great ancestor yeah. who built uh, the, the great. Uh, Route right. Yeah. That was a uh, uh, King Jayavarman uh, seven. Yeah. Who have the route, you know, go all the way to, I think Mandalay, yeah? all the way to Mandalay. Yeah. And, yeah. So, but anyway, these 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 are uh, great inspiration, you know, mm -hmm. that that we we could do something. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's face it, uh, Cambodia. We some people say we're still a post crisis country. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't know how long is the timeline before we stop being labeled as a post-crisis. Uh, but for people in my generation who went through the killing field, the genocide, uh, in our mind we're still post-crisis because we always benchmark, you know, when we, uh, you know, when we have peace, yeah. you know, and the Prime Minister Hun Sen is 
win-win, you know, uh, policy that brought us peace was uh, was was quite uh, something that we have to really appreciate, because we, without peace, you cannot do a lot of things that you do. So, so I think, you know, from a country that were a recipient of so many help from the world. Mm -hmm. It's so good to feel that now, not just now, but in the past, we've also been able to also give back to the community. It's like time to give also, you know, we, I can cite that during uh, the trade negotiation WTO, yeah. we were the first one to, uh, with Nepal, right, to, yeah. to join WTO. Uh, we were able to give back to yeah. many other Exceeding country, the lesson the Khmer doing, the ICC of uh, you know uh, Angkor, mm -hmm. right, probably here we also excel right with UNESCO. Uh, what else? Uh, the, the the mining yeah, the from uh, a recipient of the uh, peace UN peacekeeping force. Now we are sending uh, you know our own Cambodian uh, men and women peacekeeper to different parts of the country that are in crisis. And hopefully we have a, a successful cultural yeah. side that we can share as well. Yeah, yeah. We most likely the project uh, is going to be successful in the sense that it's really linked to other countries in terms of culture, in terms of local initiative, yes. in terms of like uh, capacity buildings and all this uh, cross cutting uh, scheme that yes. can easily fit with other countries. Mm. And uh, model itself is just like we do not provide. Uh, uh, like a, a one template that mm. other have to uh, apply. Maybe yes. other country also have their own mm. uh, experience already. Yes. Bigger country have their own experiences. Yes. But with us, we try something. Mm. Actually, uh, all the country talk a lot about local participation yes. and local initiative, this and that. But the actual ones, mm. how they, uh, how much they have really implemented, how mm. much local initiative are, are really in place. Mm. For us, it's really about us showing that this is how the local initiative yes. take place. Yes. Yeah, and and also at the same time we try to do a cross cutting issue hmm. that like like unique. what 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 would be the cross cutting cross cutting issue? for example the gender development okay okay or a human uh, a human resource development okay. or water management in hmm. all uh, okay. cross cutting issues or the uh, we, you, uh, we call artificial intelligence. Yes, We're going to yes. use uh, modern technology mm. you know, for industry policy yes, yes. to monitor the price of in the market. Okay. We also okay. introduce in this uh, local initiative mm, okay. uh, project as well. Design an app. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's the price of banana? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. that's what happening. Uh, actually, in one of the... Uh, in, uh, here they also have the apps yes. that local people can access to their data. Mm. You can apply that model as well for, to our mm. uh, projects. So with this, uh, we bring all the cross cutting issue and mm. put into one basket, mm. one umbrella. Okay. So it's also a unique yeah. uh, thing that we are trying to introduce. Mm. And yeah, as uh, come back to the point that you made uh, on peace. Mm. Of course, uh, Cambodia have enjoyed peace over the uh, last two decades. Mm. It's very important. We cannot take yes, yes. Uh, peace for granted. Yes. And from being a very uh, recipient country. Uh, to the country that contribute mm. to the world and to mm. the region is really important. Mm. Yeah. And we hope that this 100 model village, with the, while people happily mm. uh, live with their, uh, close to the family, yes. they are sort of like generating the uh, money, mm. the income. Yes. At the same time, they are spiritually rich mm. because yes. they live close to the family. Yes. And with this, it will contribute to maintaining peace and stability of mm. society as well. With peace and stability, Cambodia will be able to do well for mm. ourselves and at yeah. the same time going to contribute to the region and the world. Yeah, yeah. I, I think, you know, for for country who has never been in recent history through wars or civil strife, they the, the people do not appreciate uh, mm. that the peace, mm. the, the dividend of peace. Uh, like I say, for my generation who went through, we really appreciate that. Mm -hmm and we don't take for granted. Uh, we always talk to our kids, you know, how, what happened then, you know, and we always stress to them that why they are blessed. You know, they're blessed that they can wake up in the morning, have their noodle soup, and go to school, and come home and have a, you know, a stomach ache. They, they can walk to the local pharmacy and get the medicine. This is not something that we, our generation that went through the difficult years, could claim. Yeah. 
uh, you said yourself that when you grow up, even in Phnom Penh, you know, uh, there was no basic, uh, I would say, amenities. So this thing would not happen without peace, right? And the fact that now we can go beyond the capital city, you know, go to the rural area, go to the province, this is quite an achievement. Yeah. And if you think about it, it's barely two decades. Yeah. It's a blink and an eye yeah, in, in, yeah. in terms of history. Yeah. It's a blink yeah. and an eye. But, you know, uh, a, a, a country with a civilization, you know, of encore civilization, uh, we are not a young country. We have uh, a civilization. And this probably, to me, culturally speaking, yeah. is probably something that makes us resilient even after we've gone through the difficult years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. Yeah. That's very important. Yeah. Even though I could not claim that I went through uh, the Khmer Rouge learn yes. I know about Khmer Rouge because I was, I was born after that. Yes. But I went through all the difficulty, the post-war period yes. during the 1980, 1990. Yes. I even witnessed that during 1990, uh, have, we had to evacuate, run around when there was a clash in the yes. city. Yes, yes. So that kind of uh, a war uh, mentality of getting scared of the war is still yes. in my mind. And also learn that uh, really value the peace and stability yes. of the countries. Yes. And Cambodia have a long history. We have a great culture during the Khmer empires, and we can also uh, if look at the current existing uh, evidence of mm. Prayavahir temples or Angkor temple. Even going back to Tomda, there yes. is history there. Yeah. And Cambodia is one of the uh, uh, country that really, if we, we can say that really resilient and mm. recover. We yes. also have a sense of a uh, our nations yeah. as well, in the sense that we still love our own country. Mm -hmm. Even we go anywhere, we still miss our yes, own country, exactly. no matter where we are. Yeah, yeah. So the bonds of the yeah. people. Uh, are yeah, I, I, I think now it's it's important that your generation, uh, post-war, uh, have the chance to be educated abroad, uh, bring back the knowledge, in a globalized uh, society, in a I would say a IT. ICT uh, age, uh, digital age. Uh, so, to me, the it's it's a great equalizer. Uh, the the digital world is a great equalizer. Nobody have any monopoly of knowledge anymore. Not the West, not the North, not the South, not you know uh, the big country, not the small country. It's a great equalizer. We have access to the same knowledge. Uh, our human resources are young, dynamic, and I would say we care a lot. Uh, you know, I'm pretty sure you and your friends, your relatives, we care a lot about rebuilding our nation. Uh, so, so on that spirit, I think we 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 need to sustain that nation building spirit. Uh, my generation, we we just start emerge from the war. We just try to rebuild. But I think your generation is about consolidating the nation building process. Right? This 100 uh, model village. It's probably is, is a great equalizer also, mm -hmm. because it's enable somebody who live here, mm -hmm. you know, to have the same chance mm -hmm. as somebody in the Kaev or Gakong, right? Yeah. You know, uh, so so I think it's important we we sustain that spirit of uh, nation building, you know. Yeah. Um, anyway, I think we we we're almost coming to the end of the show, uh, and uh, perhaps I I would want to ask you to. Maybe what message you have to to to, to the audience? Oh, thank you. Yeah, the main message for the uh, discussion today is the Cambodia. Uh, if Cambodia mean to achieve the uh, the twenty thirty and twenty uh, fifteen uh, visions, we need to make best use of our potentials in rural areas. There are rural areas that we need to know, need to learn, and make best use of. For example, the potential of the soil, potential mm. of the uh, the people. Mm and potential of the uh, skill available, the handicraft that just mentioned about the style, uh, the, the, the stone carving and mm. so on. And this project will contribute to peace and stability of the country while, peop while people are rich uh, uh, spiritually mm. and economically, they would, be, they would live a happy life and mm. they, don't, they don't have a, need, uh, a reason to protest or do anything mm. else that to go against the existing order. Mm. So uh, 100 model village uh, uh, is the model, mm. the new model, in, an in innovative model that can contribute to nation uh, buildings yeah, and yeah. national development, mm. and, and as it also reduce the uh, what we call inequalities yeah. in terms of the uh, wealth, mm. incomes, and also gender inequality as yeah, well. Yeah. Well, 
you know, I, I want to say thank you for coming and share your perspective uh, on this, uh, generally on the rural development uh, dynamics, uh, but uh, with this specific example of uh, this 100 uh, village model, I'm quite excited about it. Looking forward, uh, maybe a year from now, to have you back. Uh, perhaps you can share, you know, the findings, you know, of uh, the the early pilot phase, and hopefully we can replicate in other country. All right. Thank you. Very so, much. in a way, so we we coming to the end of the show, but uh, I'm not gonna bother summarizing because our discussion is quite broad. Uh, but the the main message that I get out of this discussion is that uh, the government is quite keen to to see the rural area have a better opportunity as much as those in the urban area. And one of the approach that they're willing to commit to engage is to work on this uh, 100 model village, uh, which has a nationwide uh, broad, uh, I would say, coverage. So I think we look forward to, to, to see the, the progress. But I think it's important also that the stakeholder, and here my pitch will probably more toward the stakeholder, civil society who are in different province, look out for this project, uh, try to reach out to see how you can contribute. You know, uh, I know the Ministry of Women Affairs have different center in different province. Uh, this program has also a good uh, uh, gender dimension. This is also an opportunity. The youth, the same thing. You know, how can we work together? Again, it's a government initiative, but it really should be a national initiative driven by, initiated by the government. But ultimately, it should be taken by the, the local community. So on that note, I, I wish you a good nation building and uh, hopefully we can learn something from this uh, experience. So on that note, uh, thank you so much you. and uh, see you next time. Yeah. See you. Good night.